In 2018, Wizards of the Coast put out a really great book called Art and Arcana. For anyone who's really into D&D, it's an amazing walk through the history of Dungeons and Dragons. I picked it up real shortly after it was released, but my brother, he didn't know that, and he just picked me up the special edition. And I figured, let's look at it together. All right, so let's get into it. We have a beautiful black clamshell box with the Hydra 74's art. If you're not familiar with Hydra 74, he's a designer and illustrator out of Orlando, Florida. Wizard of the Coast really loves him, and so do I. You can see his work on a lot of the collector's edition books like Icewind Dale. All right, we got a beautiful red inlining paper. And on the left there, we have the ephemera packet. One of the big features of this book is, or the special edition of this book, is this ephemera packet that's full of uh, bits of art and history. Let's see what's in here. All right, so the first thing in this packet we see is an interior painting from Storm's King's Thunder of this giant slayer. Really powerful start, really beautiful artwork. I think we're gonna have a ton of this in this folder. The one little downside is that a lot of these bigger prints are folded and have creases in them. So I don't know what value they have other than this initial open up and look at it. But it was a really cool effect, really beautiful work. We have the Tomb of Horrors, um, original 1975 tournament module coming up next. If you're not familiar with this uh, Tomb of Horrors, it's one of the most feared modules in D&D's history, kind of a torture the player module. Um, we've recorded a video of us playing a couple years ago, so you can check that out on the link here. Really cool art and little sketch notes. I mean, it's just, just like a little captured history of a hobby that we all love. Okay, up next, the cover painting for the Keep on the Borderlands 1980. Then we have cover paintings for World of Greyhawk 1983, for the cover painting for Swords of Deceit 1986. Then the interior paintings from second edition Player's Handbook 1989. The cover painting of the Forge from Fury from 2000. Cover paintings for a Player's Handbook 1978. The cover paintings for Fiend Folio 1981. Promotional paintings for Dungeons & Dragons 30th Anniversary in 2004. And finally, the exterior painting for Dungeon Master Screen 1979. All right, so that is a beautiful little packet of history. Really beautiful paintings from the last 50 years. But the real meat of this product is the book. Beautiful black satin cover again with Hydra 74's art and a little surprise mimic on the back. I love when people add little details like that. Um, really caught me off guard when I turned it around just like the mimic would in the campaign. Beautiful low opacity map. Again, just this book is full of beautiful art. And here we can see there's over 400 pages of history and art to go through. We're not gonna go through it all because that would take hours. But I guarantee you, if you're interested in the history of our hobby, there's no better book to own. You get to see uh, where it started in the wargaming, what it meant for the culture back when it originally started, and even like what it meant for now, like when we see um, Stranger Things and how much it impacted that. One of my favorite features of this book is when they take monsters and they show kind of where they started to where they go. We see the original one, the top left there, all the way down to the fifth edition Purple Worm. Here's some more comparisons over time. And again, like, let's see who started it. Talk about Gygax and all his partners and TSR and what it was like before Wizards of the Coast. I mean, there's so much that went into this hobby before uh, Critical Role, right? Or before Dimension 20 or before any of these mod modern 5e D&D. &D. There's really rich history here. The new 5e art is undeniably great. But I do kind of miss this old vintage style. Um, kind of just feels like, hey, we need to play now. Let's get out of the content as we can. Let's make it really fun. Uh, just less, less polished. Got some Dragonlance. Again, some comparison art to the sketches and the final paintings. Got some Driss comparison over different uh, versions. Everyone's favorite Dark Elf. Just think of like all the different campaigns and hours around a table that this art is able to inspire. Just really cool. 
So third edition is when I started playing D&D. &D. Uh, actually, it was 3.5, but it was really cool to see kind of that transition from two to three. It was a really big jump, arguably as big of a jump as four to five, which you'll also get to experience in this book. Look at all those cool dragons of third edition. Just lots of beautiful art, man. You could really spend hours just sitting on each page, seeing all the little details in the armor, in the battle sequences. It's just all really, really beautiful and top-notch art. Just so much history, so, so much legacy. Oh, fire giant, so dope. So I guess my final thoughts here are, if you're into D&D, this book is a must have. If you're into the history of D&D, I can't recommend anything more than the special edition. This really is a, a proud object now on my shelf. And I believe as of recording this, you can get it for like $70 on Amazon. So it's not too expensive. It's a really great value. Um, just go out there and find it. We'll put a link in the description. If you liked video, if you like this video and kind of these review, quick reviews of books, let us know so that we can keep making the content you guys enjoy. As always, head on over to mof1.network and join us on Slack to continue the conversation.